look like a hot mess. Hey guys, so before I begin, I just want to say I'm oddly cheerful and chipper in this video because I feel the best that I've felt in days and I'm trying to be happy about it. So if my mood does not match the, like, the mood of the situation, I apologize. It is what it is. So I haven't really had time to sit down and collect my thoughts and let people know what's going on. Like, I know I have quite a few number of subscribers and people who follow me on all social media. And I just feel, you know, these situations, it's like, you don't have time. You, I, I didn't feel like updating. I know I'm not obligated to, but it's like, I know for a while now that I've taken long breaks from social media without t telling anybody. And it's just like, there are people that worry and I appreciate it. So I, I'm sorry that I've been taking so many long breaks and I'm sorry for coming on in the last video, like I, how I was in that video and scaring some people. I had some messages on um, my Instagram. People were just like, oh my God, like, I'm terrified. Like, what the hell? Like, you looked like, <laughs> somebody said I looked like I was about to like to pop off basically. <laughs> Jesus. And I watched that, rewatched that video. I'm just like, damn, I look terrible. I, like, I, I, my cheek, as you can see, like, even my, my cheeks are rosier. I don't have, like, that glassy eye look that I did before. And that, like, greenish tint to my skin. And I'm not, like, literally gasping for air and not being able to talk. Because that was hard. It just, I couldn't even talk to my parents. I, I would have to text my mom and my, my, my siblings because... I just couldn't talk. And I told him, I said, don't call me. If you want to talk to me, just text me. <sighs> like, you can't even FaceTime me. I know it's rough, but um, it is what it is. But anyways, um, so all of this started on Christmas Eve. I know, right? <laughs> Christmas Eve. I get sick. <sighs> I don't, I, I've never had this before. So I didn't even know what this, well, I didn't know the signs. I knew on Christmas Eve that something was off because I was so hot. And then I realized I was walking around with like a, with a, with a fever. I couldn't wear pants. I was in a nightie with underwear and my siblings were over and we were celebrating Christmas Eve. And I was just hot. I was super hot and moody. I hadn't slept the night before. So I was running on caffeine to get keep, get me go you know keep me you know moving and everything because apparently uh, insomnia can happen before actually getting sick like how I lived pneumonia so forgive me if I take like a, a brief light break because I'm trying to like, remember everything that's happened um so Like, time goes on, you know, on Christmas Eve, it's like, God, I don't even know what time it was all, it all started, but, um, all of a sudden, you know, I was right ready to go to bed, and I started getting the shakes really bad, like, and sh just shivering, like, I was shivering, I was hot, I was cold, I couldn't barely, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't catch my breath, so... We decided to go to the hospital. Well, actually, my parents decided to call the EMTs because, um, like, it was so late. And they thought, they thought because, you know, it, even in freestanding ERs, it's, it could take hours to get into a room. And my parents didn't think it was a good idea for me to wait in a waiting room how I was. And so the, getting an EMT to come out would, have been, would be better so I can get to a room faster and it turned out to be this, a smart move. So I find out that I have pneumonia and I get all the necessary medications and I get sent home. I thought, okay, I can deal with this. So 
I get them, you know, I think it was the next day. Because by the time I got home, it was like the hours, early hours of the next morning, Christmas Day. And um, I spent a majority, I, like, I can say like I spent a majority of Christmas Day at home, from what I understand, I think. God, it's just all blurred together, I'm sorry. Um, so my dad does get the Medicaid. He had to like go to another pharmacy, get the medication, my antibiotics and stuff like that. And it was pretty late because it being Christmas, the, the, my pharmacy wasn't open. And I had to get it cleared by my, my insurance company. It was just, just a huge mess. So we, you know, he ended up finding a 24 hour pharmacy that was like 22 miles away just so I could get my medication that day or else I would have had to wait until Sunday or, you know, whatever, uh, a, a, a non-holiday day for me to get my medication. So he gets it, you know, and I take the medication and that night I go to bed thinking everything's going to be okay and that I'm just going to take my medication and try to power through this and I go to bed and I wake up and what do you know I get the shakes again I can't breathe I go back to the hospital and poof I find out along with having pneumonia I have cellulitis in my lower left leg so I get sent home again with new medication. They are pretty pissed off that I came back in the first place. I'm thinking, well, hello. I mean, I'm, I'm sick. Like, where am I supposed to go? I can't go to my doctor's office. They're not even there, you know, like, oh, I feel like I was being berated. <sighs> Sorry, I don't know adjust to my, myself on the, I'm on like a recliner. I feel like I was being berated for needing to come to the hospital. This isn't one, like a routine UTI situation. This was, you know, serious, very, very serious. But they were treating it like a, like a, it was just my routine UTI thing. I'm like, dude, like I cannot breathe by myself. And Funny thing enough is that they didn't even bother to put me on oxygen at that point, even though I was having a hard time breathing. They just said, oh, well, that's just part of the pneumonia. They didn't give me any breathing treatment. They didn't put me on any oxygen. They just gave me more antibiotics and sent me on my way. And I said, don't you think I should be admitted? No, there are no beds available. You wouldn't get one any, even, you probably couldn't get one any, even, if, even if you needed to. I thought, oh, great. Okay, so whatever. So I go home. It, I'm not, I'm not at home long before, and before I have to go back. And for the third and final time, I said, you know, you've been here how many times in the last what, 24 to 48 hours? We, you need to get admitted, basically. So I get admitted. I'm at this one, the local stand, free standing ER, waiting for a ride to a hospital bigger hospital, which is the Grant Hospital. And I, I was told that I could be sitting there in the freestanding ER room, waiting for a room for upwards of two days with no food, no drink, because I, and barely any rest, because those cots, are not very comfortable and I'm not high maintenance or anything but it's just like you know this thing you have to rest and you can't expect somebody to rest and try to heal themselves when the accommodation is just not good I'm the kind of person that needs a good bed to be able to rest it's just because the way my body is I guess I don't know and but the people there were nice and the doctors were nice, whatever, but it's just like, there are certain things that were done at both the Grant Hospital 
and the freestanding ER hospital that made the situation worse. Like I was given way too much fluid at the um, freestanding ER and with my situation, too much fluid is not good. So I feel like that was what kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back basically. And um, I knew it was because I thought, you know, after it happened when I was in here, I was thinking about it be earlier on this morning because I was like, really, I'm like, why all of a sudden what it just gets from bad to like worse, worse it's because I was given six bags of fluid all because I was crying out to, for a drink, like a, a, drink, a gla uh, like a, some water. They decided to give me six bags of fluid. Now, I don't know, I'm not a medical professional, but if you have fluid in your lungs like that, why would you give them more fluid? Especially that much fluid. I can understand maybe you want to give them a one bag or whatever, but six? Like, this doesn't make sense to me now that I think, you know, now that I think about it. So, when I am finally, you know, I'm able to, and the, the EMT guys come earlier, uh, when I'm at the freestanding ER, they come earlier than expected. And, um, you know, I was only at the freestanding ER for maybe like four or five hours, it wasn't that long. And, um, I was, I'm told by the nurses, at the freestanding ER, that they had a room available for me. It was an actual room, and that that's where I, that's why I was going so early, is because they had a room available. And I was surprised. I was like, "Wow, so soon!" So you know, I'm transported to the other to Grant Hospital. They're get, they're wheeling me through, and and I'm genuinely curious because I see that they're wheeling me through the ER department, and I thought, "Oh, they're just probably just." going through and then they're just going to take me to the rooms and maybe they're just taking a shortcut i don't know no they come in and they they wheel me to a, a room okay in the er saying well this is where you'll be where you'll be until we can get you a room we don't know when you'll get a room i'm thinking to myself then why the fuck did you transfer me to and why was I lied to, you know? Why the fuck did you transfer me here if you guys didn't have a room available? And they, so they came up with this story, well, because that place is limited to what they can do and we wanna run more tests on you and we have the equipment, which I can understand. I can totally understand, but it's just like, they they could have waited to do that those tests. I don't know, maybe they, they felt they couldn't, I don't know, but it was just like so frustrating because I'm like, I felt so much more relaxed knowing that I was going to be in a room and that the beds were going to be better and I'd probably get some sleep but at that point I don't know I wasn't sure because it was like my breathing was so bad that it's like I don't know if I could lay down with and sleep even with oxygen on because at that point I had oxygen um the third time in the hospital at the freestanding they put me immediately put me, put me on oxygen because I was begging for it. I was like, I need oxygen. I can't breathe on my own. I had to beg for it. <sighs> so when I get to Grant Hospital, I was like, well, what's the, so how long would I have to wait for a room? Oh, the way I, I, it was so bad. The way I was treated, it was like, well, we don't know. How do you hold one of the nurses said, well, how do you hell, how the hell am I supposed to know? That's what she said to me. I'm not even joking. She said, how the hell am I supposed to know? I'm sitting there, I'm like, did she just talk to me like that? Like, I'm a patient, like, are, are, are they, I, I'm thinking to myself, even in my wretched state that I was in, I'm thinking, I, are you guys allowed to talk to patients like that? I don't think so. And it was just this one particular nurse. She was so rude. She was so cold. 
that I swear to God, if it weren't for the blonde hair and the fact that maybe she's, the fact that she was a lot taller, she reminded me of Chantel. She was like a splitting image of a taller, longer hair and blonde hair Chantel. It actually makes me laugh when I think about it now. <laughs> and the irony is that she's just as bitchy, maybe even and rude, maybe even more so. So you guys, I think I may have found the American Chantel. <laughs> oh, I should have done that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But it's just, I should have taken a picture, but I didn't want to be rude, but it was just like, wow. Wow. <laughs> who'd have, who'd have known that I'd find the American Chantel? Okay, so, um, so they couldn't tell me when I would get a room. They said, well, there are seven people ahead, ahead of you, and it all depends on, you know, the, the needs of the patient, whatever. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm not bitching about that. I understand the situation. But they treated me like I was stupid and didn't understand the situation. I'm like, look, I understand. I understand the situation. I understand what's going on. I'm not stupid. I'm not blind to the pandemic, whatever. But it's like, they didn't, it, it, it didn't matter what I would say to them. I said, they, they still treated me like dirt. I mean, this, well, this one nurse in, partic in particular treated me like dirt. So, I, um, I, I was probably in there for about seven, eight hours, maybe, maybe six, almost, maybe, maybe almost seven hours. And I was trying to get the whole room situation figured out because they, they kept on flip-flopping on me on about the room. And, um... I was just trying to ask, like, what's the typical wait time? Because, you know, I'm getting so many stories from so many different people. And I just wanted to know. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I don't want to wait. I said, I, I don't want to wait three days for a room if I'm going to be in this bed. Okay. And um, they couldn't. And they wouldn't tell me. They just wouldn't. I'm just like. And, but it was just this one nurse in particular that was just, I legitimately don't understand how she can be in the, in the health, in the health, in the health in, you know, the, the health industry, like the medical health industry, <laughs> being a nurse, being around, helping patients all the time with like literally your job and you treat people like that. So the, la the straw that broke the camel's back and the reason why I voluntarily signed myself out so I wasn't discharged is because of the nurse. And I said, I'm leaving because of that nurse. I'm like, I told him, I said, I'm not gonna be treated this way. I'm not gonna be talked down to and told to shut up because she did tell me to shut up numerous times because I was crying out. I was crying loudly because I was in pain and I was terrified. I I mean, my mind was racing. I, I, I thought I was gonna die, like seriously. I didn't know if I had COVID, they, okay, and I, I don't have COVID. They wouldn't, I asked them numerous times. I said, can you please retest me for COVID? Okay, even though I hadn't been around anybody who, had, who has had COVID, I just wanted to know whether I had COVID or not because I had all the symptoms and it wouldn't surprise me if I did. So, but they wouldn't do it. I was like, really? You're going to put other people at risk? Well, you, we tested you for COVID how many days ago? Like, you don't need to be retested. I'm like, you should anyways because my symptoms are getting worse. Like, real, real talk, like, oh. The only good thing they do, did was give me Lasix to help me pee the liquid out and help maybe alleviate 
the edema in my legs, which has caused the cellulitis and the fluid in my lungs. Um, and I'm getting, by the way, I'm getting Lasix, a Lasix treatment every day. So, um, but just, I had, I had it out with a nurse basically. And I didn't have a lot of fighting power, but I used a lot of my strength, less of my strength to tell her that, you know, where to go basically go to hell basically and where to you know, kiss my ass with the, with the sun doesn't shine basically because I was just like how dare you treat me like dirt because I'm asking questions and she's like you know how overworked we are blah blah you're not the only patient here who is sick blah blah blah, blah. I'm just like you know really if you don't like your job then fucking quit like seriously then you know in this time of crisis, nurses like you are not needed. You know, if you're not going to be kind and patient. Like, I know you're overworked, but Jesus, like, just take a day off, maybe. I don't know. Like, just, jeez. You don't need to treat people like that, especially when they're sick. It's just not right. It's not okay. But anyways, um... So I took my chances and I signed myself out and I told mom and dad, I'm, I want to come home. Like, and they said, this is such a bad idea and back my mind, I'm fighting with myself. And you know, I said, yeah, I know it's a bad idea. So they wheel me out and they just basically shoved me in the waiting room. Okay. And as soon as I'm off the oxygen, oh my God, it was bad. Like I was burning up, uh, not right away, but like by the time I got home, and then maybe an hour or two later, I was, I had a fever again. I was burning up. My heart was, rate was 140 something. And my blood oxygen was like in the low, in, in mid to low 80s, what I understand. So it was pretty bad. So I called the EMTs myself and I said, I think I'm having a heart attack because I felt like it. And they just like, we need, you know, when they got here, they thought, well, we need to get you back to the ER. And I said, I don't want to go to the this place they're just gonna send me here I'm like please send me somewhere else and they ended up sending me to where I'm at now and I do not regret it I don't regret leaving Grant Hospital but as it turns out my I don't know if it was my local news or um, CNN but my mom told me that my hospital was on the news and they actually have um, the Coast, not Coast Guard, um, uh, what is it called? National Guard ha ha helping out at hospitals in my state. I saw two today um, because of the staff shortage and because of how many people are coming in with COVID. Like it's, it's insane, you guys. It really is insane. <laughs> like, um, I'm, I got a, I mean, I got a room here so fast and it's just, my I, I I luck was on my side, okay? Cause I I bet you right now there are people that have been there for longer than I am in the in the ER room that um, are still probably waiting for a room. So, like at this point, I don't even know if there are going to be many rooms available any rooms available for me to have my kidney stone surgery because I have to ha have a room available. Um, I have to have a room available for after the surgery so I don't know what's going to happen with that and I may postpone it just because I'm going to need time to get over this I'm going to need time to figure out like what my next steps are going to be because there's going to be some major changes in my life and I've been sitting here just reflecting and thinking about what this is, how this is going to impact my life and what I need to do to make my situation better. And it's just a lot. There's going to be a lot, a lot of changes. I'm not going to make it to the gym right away. It's probably not going to be until like mid January, uh, maybe February until I make it back to the gym. I may have to have home therapy for a while. Um, but I could possibly make it to the gym and 
um, a couple weeks. I don't know. But it, it probably, max probably beginning of February, minimum probably mid January. So, because I don't want to like jump, you know, jump the gun too soon. But I mean, I also have to be on a heart healthy diet. So, um, because I don't know what's going on yet and I will keep you guys updated, but I, th this situation may have affected my heart permanently. So I don't know what's going to come down line. I'm terrified. You know, I've just been anxiously waiting for the cardiologist to get here. Um, this is day two. Like I had, you know, he's supposed to come soon, but I don't know. Um, I've, I have had an echocardiogram. I've had an echo done. So maybe that's all that I need to have done for him to, for the cardiologist to determine where, like what the problem is. Um, I've seen a respiratory therapist. I've had a couple of breathing ther, you know, breathing treatments. Um, but the worst of it has been the chest pain. Like when you have the breathing problem then coupled with the chest pain, it's like, it's a double whammy. Like I, like I said, if it's you guys you saw in the video, the previous video, I could barely talk. So can, I can't, I can't believe I'm talking normally again. Like it's just the little things that we take for granted basically is like <laughs> what I'm trying to say, even though I'm rambling like crazy, but So yeah, I'm just, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. It's, pro it's probably going to be another day or so. That's what I was told. So it's not going to be much longer. Um, my sister's place of work, two idiot people brought their children in knowing they had COVID. And now they have exposed everybody there, my sisters included. So the place has to close. My sisters have to have COVID tests. So do my parents because they came in contact with my sisters. So we're all waiting for um, results basically. Because if they have COVID, I might have to go to a hotel for two weeks, <laughs> basically. Yeah, it's gonna suck if I have to. I doubt it though. Like, it's gone past like five days, whatever, since my sisters have been exposed. So, and none of my family, they haven't gotten any symptoms. So I don't think so, but it's mandatory that they have to take a test. And um, whatever happens, happens. Just have to take this in stride. It's just... The irony of the situation is that last year we actually had COVID and it was my dad that was in the hospital. Now this year, it's me. I don't have COVID, but I got pneumonia and cellulitis. So it's like, what's gonna happen next year? Are we gonna have a normal Christmas? So when I get home, hopefully if everything turns out to be okay, then I can come home and not have to go to a hotel because that's the plan. And I said, mom, I said, you can, my pre, my present to me could be uh, a nice hotel, not like five star or anything, but a place with a pool maybe, I don't know. Um, <laughs> like I could use it anyways, right? Um, <laughs> maybe like a, a Hilton, like a, I don't know. <laughs> like I could find a good deal. Um, yeah, there's a couple of Hiltons around here. I thought, well, maybe if you just get me into a Hilton somewhere, get a good deal. I'm sure I could find a good deal. I could stay at a Hilton for a while. <laughs> just, you know, get my Xbox and bring it there. <laughs> Rent a computer, like a laptop, whatever. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Anyways, um, what was I going to say? That's pretty much it. Uh, that's all I wanted to say, really. Um, 
I will keep you guys updated with this, what's going on. And uh, until next time, peace out my ninjas.